So thanks everyone. So just, again, just a little bit about me. Again, my name is Kathy Payne. I'm Director of Human Resources here at Gravitational. And I joined Gravitational December 2019. So it's coming up on, it's almost a year, which is really exciting. And, um, you know, shortly after I joined as Director of Human Resources, then the world fell into this global pandemic and kind of life changed. We, everyone immediately um, went to working from home and shelter in place. So it's been a really interesting and exciting time. And as a Director of Human Resources really, um, forced me to, to look very carefully, one, at our, our systems, um, both for emergencies, for working from home, being able to be flexible and transition very quickly, as well as how we support um, our employees from not just a, a physical health, but mental health perspective as well. Um, I love dance, I love yoga. My background before director being, before human resources was in education. Um, and I had a dance and yoga studio for a long time. So I think that as a director of human resources, I really take that in terms of how do you create spaces where people can learn and grow? Um, because whether it's a middle school classroom or a dance class, a ballet class, um, or a work environment, people need to know and feel safe to learn, to grow, to be listened to, um, to have a level of um, security and um, so, that, so that folks can thrive in their roles. So I take that very, very seriously, that really it's how do, how do we, and how does this department, how do I um, really be a resource for the humans at our company? That's really important. So just a little bit about us. So one, gravitational, we build open core cloud security and infrastructure tools using Golang, TypeScript, and Coffee. Now, please remember that I am not the technical person at gravitational. So I'm like, I'm, this is the part where I'm reading. Okay. So don't ask me too many questions about that, but definitely follow up with me. And I'm happy to put you in touch with the folks that can really talk to you with like the utmost um, excitement, enthusiasm, knowledge, and brilliance around these particular things. So, <laughs> well, and I think coffee, both coffee, both coffee and coffee script are very, very important to gravitational. Um, before we sheltered in place, like our coffee game, both in our Seattle offices and our Oakland offices were, um, were top notch. So that's really important to us. So our mission is to empower engineers to, to, to access and distribute resources anywhere. Like we're all about freedom of movement. So that's really important. So if that is something that you're interested in, we're very much engineer centered. So that's the comment that we get the most um, about our company. So when, when people talk to us, they know that um, everything really centers around, around our engineers and, and the, the culture really derives from, um, from our engineering department. And we'll, so we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So we're a pioneer in environment-free computing and our commitment is really to deliver best-in-class security and compliance in, in everything that we make. So when it comes to our products, um, it's pretty, it's an exciting place to work because the, the technology for developers is really cutting edge. So you definitely wanna be on this team. So we make software run by itself everywhere. Um, we build a future where software is not just tied to centralized clouds, um, they really can be can run and be operated everywhere and anywhere, which is really exciting. So right now we have 47 employees, um, 19 are engineers on three teams. Uh, and we're in four countries, primarily the United States, we have some folks in Canada, um, primarily in Toronto, as well as, um, as Germany and Italy. So that's where we are, where we're distributed. We're open source, that's a big deal for us. Um, and, you know, what I found is that this, the idea of open source is not, it's not just in the, in the code as well, but in our open source, it definitely affects the culture of the organization. It's a culture of transparency. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but really about how do we share, particularly for our team members, how, do, how does everyone have access to as much information as possible to do their best work? Again, some of the tech stack that we work with. This should be familiar um, to many of you. 
So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, again, please reach out. I want to make sure to, to connect you um, with our folks so you can um, talk about what that means. And particularly when it comes to our hiring process, one of the, th the feedback, the incredible feedback that we get from, um, from candidates uh, is that on the engineering side, when people um, apply to positions, to engineering positions, um, but as well as this happens in marketing and sales as well, that you can expect to get really great um, feedback, um, really honest feedback, and um, to have a straightforward process that is supportive in nature. When it comes to diversity, just to be really honest, I mean, it's something that is, uh, um, is something that we're working on that we are not as diverse as we would like to be. Um, currently, we have nine female presenting team members out of 47, um, one in engineering. Um, and some of the things that we're doing is being to track race and ethnicity information so that we can look at where we are um, and where we're going. I wrote a blog post um, maybe about six months ago on the future of women at Gravitational, you know, and as well as um, an article about how really nice companies can pr can still um, have promote racism, not promote racism, but really um, perpetuate racism, even when there are no racists at the company. Um, but the, how racism is in the air that we breathe as a society, and so how do we um, continually do the work so that we can be a very inclusive environment, um, and we're all. You know, we're all team members, candidates, anyone who's um, engaged with gravitational can make sure that they feel that um, inclusion, um, know that diversity is something that's important, um, and, and that we're making sure that we're doing the work in a really profound way. And again, please ask questions if anything comes up, um, in, whether in the chat or in the Q&A as well. Company culture, which is one of um, my favorite things to talk about, and I think really important when looking at different um, companies and, and career opportunities. Um, some of the things that for us, like we really, some of our values that we've done a lot of work to make sure that as we grow and as we scale and we're growing very quickly, um, that the things that are amazing about us today um, and the things that were amazing about us at 25 people, the things that are amazing us, about us now at almost 50 people, and the things we want those to continue to be the things that are important when we're at 100 and 200 and 2,000 people. So again, I've talked about this before, but having an open core culture, um, what that really means from an organizational standpoint is valuing transparency. And some of the ways that that works includes it's really important to write things down, um, to share everything that we do across the company. We really believe that information, um, information silos breeds, you know, sense of politics and, uh, and really they're the antithesis of productivity. So we really try to make sure that, you know, everyone can get the information that they need to do the best job and, um, and that we're really clear about where the kind of single sources of truth are um, for getting information. So that's really important. The idea of um, thoughtfulness, you know, sometimes our, this industry is really prone to, to very fashionable trends. And we really try to, to dig into the details, to write down our options, um, you know, to really collaborate on, on our course of action. And, um, and we value thoughtfulness over speed. It's not just about like moving fast, but also being very thoughtful in the process as well. We value honesty and honesty isn't always easy. So we, it, it, it requires courage on all of our part in order to be honest, um, to open up to our individual mistakes, uh, to take a stand in the industry um, as a team and as leaders, um, even when it's against popular opinion and we try to be direct in our opinions um, and, in, and in our advice um, in a very thoughtful way. We also value humility. This is not um, a company of like really uh, big personalities. Um, 
that's that's not what we're that's not what we're going for. We're not arrogant. Um, like I said, we don't have these huge personalities, huge egos. Um, instead, we really believe that our work product should speak for itself, that our customer service should speak for itself. Um, we're open to other ideas and we value and respect different um, you know, team members' experiences and um, identities and uh, contribution, which is super important. Um, so we do have strong opinions, not, not to say that we don't have strong opinions. Um, you know, we, we're proud, we're never too proud to admit when we're, we're wrong, to learn, to grow. Um, and we want it, we don't, don't want to be too opinionated that we don't listen to another side. Um, Cause that's where you lose the innovation. You really lose the, um, you know, what the idea of being creative and innovative. Yeah, just to go back a little bit, we have um, we have offices in, in Oakland, Seattle, Toronto. Right now, our offices are closed because after from COVID nineteen, so um, so everyone is working from home right now. And because uh, like since shelter in place, because we had to go from working in those those offices, our headquarters, um, to everyone working from home overnight, um, what we realized is that it made us much more location agnostic and realizing that what's most important is everyone is comfortable where they're working. So hopefully that answers your question, Jeff. We're definitely, um, remote working is absolutely possible. And part of one of our um, values, and I think this goes under um, thoughtfulness as well as balance, is especially for new employees, what is that experience of working from home right from the very beginning? It's very different where, especially for more junior positions, coming in, being new to a position, new, being potentially new to a particular career, um, and getting support, getting mentoring, um, you know, and what does that look like from a remote and all remote environment? And again, that goes back to the transparency piece and making sure that everyone has access to the important information. Um, and Jonathan, great question around how do you keep ego out of the workplace? And I think it, it, there's a couple different pieces to that. One is really our leaders um, being a good representation for that. Um, you know, there's some, and, and also having a sense of balance. So for our leaders, the expectation is that they will model what it looks like to keep ego out of the workplace, being good listeners. Um, being open to feedback, um, valuing feedback and soliciting feedback on a regular basis. Um, I think it's a transparency piece as well of giving information and, and making sure that folks, folks know what's going on um, in a way that's thoughtful and, and really uh, thoughtful and compassionate as well. So uh, I think having being, um, being a role model is a big part of that. And then, and having that really be the expectation of, of everyone. Um, even when it comes down to the, the code, one of the things that um, it's, it may seem small, but for our engineers, we don't have cursing or um, offensive language in the code. And that's something that's been there from the very beginning. Um, so something else to just model that a sense of thoughtfulness, um, kindness and respect uh, I think that all goes into reducing the ego, um, increasing humility and honesty and thoughtfulness and transparency and all of those things. Great questions. And then I think the last piece around valuing balance, um, we approach each other, we approach our work, we approach our customers and, and our community with the understanding that um, we're running a marathon and not a sprint. Um, we understand that everyone has um, many priorities, especially given this, this global pandemic and people working from home in lots of different situations. Um, we've always been really strong supporters of work-life balance. And we understand that true productivity um, is only achievable with balance. Um, that includes mind, body, and spirit. So, you know, having a focus on wellness too. And what we found, and we really had to be honest with ourselves is that as this, um, again, with this global pandemic, what does it mean to have this work-life balance? Um, for example, working in the Oakland office, it was really easy to um, for our leaders to model that work-life balance because really after five or 6 p.m., 
everybody was gone. The CEO was gone. The COO was gone. You know, in our Seattle office, the CTO would go home. Um, he would ride his bike home. You know, people had interests. They were with their families. Um, it was very much like the company was turned off at the end of the at the end of the day. Um, and what we're finding, and we're again, we're really being honest with ourselves, is that since the global pandemic and people, you know, working from home and managing um, childcare and schooling for younger kids, um, support for um, parents and family members, and just this life of whether you love working from home or not, or however social you are, or whatever it is, that it is different working remotely. Um, versus working remotely during a global pandemic, as well as everything else that's happening um, in the world. So really looking at how do we um, support employees during this time? Um, how do we really model that balance um, when the world is not balanced? And a lot of people are finding that uh, it's become increasingly difficult to feel that same sense of balance. So we continue to look at that. So if there's any things that um, that you have ideas about, please feel free. And I just want to add there too. Um, so in just going back like here, like you'll find that what I love too, some of the things that I love is that, um, you know, the, the culture transitioning to all remote was, was easy um, because we've always, even though we've had, we've had multiple main offices, the culture was very distributed um, from a technological place. Like those things were in place. Um, you know, there were many things in place for us to make that transition very smoothly. Um, having that open source organizational culture, um, again, from a, from a sense of transparency has, has helped as well. Many people find that our culture is in many ways very um, almost academic in a way. And I think that's the, the thoughtfulness of the humility as well. You'll frequently find people talking about the books that they're reading, um, how it impacts their work. Um, when decisions are made, it's like, here's the kind of um, research or thinking that's behind this decision or behind um, the strategy in managing or in the decision or in how things work. So um, there's, there's a level of politeness um, with, with our code of conduct and engineering that really resonates with the entire company about being very respectful. So that's a little bit about our company values. Some of our perks, like right now, we're still in this um, pandemic office budget with, you know, where folks as they're coming on um, have a thousand dollars to just make sure that their home work environment feels comfortable where they can do their best work. Um, Learning and development is really important. You have one, you know, at least one conference funded per year. We really encourage folks to develop their learning and development, even though our, you know, offsite may be um, virtual, but we also find that we're so, <laughs> we're just hoping that one day we can all get together again. Um, it was really a lot of our connective uh, activities have been virtual um, and we've tried to be really creative. So not, you know, we started, you know, we had our virtual um, happy hours, um, but we've also done some other things like our, like um, going to uh, drive-in theaters together, um, what all over the country and all over the world, whether it's Toronto, Seattle, Oakland, Atlanta, um, you know, folks showing up to their own um, drive-in theaters and being able to share back what, um, you know, what they saw. Um, we have a an Halloween costume contest this coming up. Um, we've done cooking classes together. Um, so just really trying to just making sure that we stay connected. Um, in terms of learning too, we frequently have lunch and learns. We uh, just today um, working with one of our engineers to share, um, to get feedback on a workshop that he'll be doing around um, Git 101, Git 102, as well as 201 and 202, um, so that both for on our technical staff as well as our non-technical staff being able to, to learn more about how to be efficient and effective on GitHub um, and with Git, and um, as well as our CEO last week did a presentation on SEO, which was super interesting. So um, coming up in a couple of weeks, our, 
our um, COO will be presenting. So really making sure that there's ongoing opportunities for learning and development, especially because the kind of work that we do can be extremely technical um, and from there's so much to learn in all of our departments. And I think that's one thing that's exciting. And one thing that people, when they're joining um, a startup, it's about learning, it's about growing, and it's about the opportunity to have access to much more learning that you might do if you're kind of siloed with a much larger company. So we really, um, really want to take that, take advantage of that um, and continue to offer opportunities for learning and growing. So that is um, some of our work. We have some time. I wanted to make sure that we left some time for questions, for thoughts, um, you know, what, what are some things that stand out to you? Um, what are some of your, your interests and things that you want to know more about? Yeah, great question. So Jonathan asked um, about target headcount to hire for the next three months. So during the, um, you know, obviously we're still in the pandemic, but from about maybe March for about maybe four or five months, we had a hiring freeze um, just because we wanted to be very, you know, conservative and really watch to see what's happening with this, um, you know, with this pandemic and its impact on the company. Um, so now our hiring freeze is over and we are going back to being very, very aggressive in terms of hiring. So we have, um, we're currently looking to, to hire close to 25 people just in the in, you know, before the end of the year, which is an ambitious goal, but we've got plenty of work to do. Um, so please check out our, um, our hiring page, our careers page on gravitational.com um, and check us out. We have, you know, about, 10 um, current positions. So let me take a look here. I want you to, and I'll pull that up as well. So it's pretty, we're getting pretty aggressive. So if you can see some of our positions now. Both, either one, Jeff, like please feel free to um, apply directly. Um, feel free to contact me at Kathy, K A F I, gravitational.com. I'd love to hear from you, um, answer your quick questions, connect you with who might best be able to answer your questions. We have a couple, um, see on the a website engineer on the design side, that it's such an amazing department. It's a small department, but what I tell you, just a really um, great people, really exciting folks. Um, with a, a very much a mentoring mindset on the on the in the design side, so we have on the engineering side to see technical a couple of technical support engineering positions. Um, you see, there's some if the location um, doesn't matter, so please feel free to apply for those positions, even if you're not in Atlanta, Georgia, even if you're not in Seattle, Washington. Definitely apply for those positions. Yeah, absolutely. When we're always looking for um, the right folks, uh, sometimes our CEO calls them purple squirrels. You know, you're gonna we're gonna know if you're a right fit for gravitational. Um, and so, even if you don't see your um, your perfect job title on here, please reach out to us because again, as a as a startup, that's where we thrive is on being able to be. Um, innovative and flexible and finding the right folks with the right um, skills and leadership um, to help us do what we need to do and help us meet our mission and meet our goals. So, so Jonathan, even if you don't see um, that managing manager director position um, in engineering, so please reach out to us and let's talk about that.
you see in, in the three teams currently in um, on our engineering side are two of our products, Gravity and Teleport, uh, as well as customer success. We have mark and as well we have marketing and sales positions. So in every single department, whether it's sales, marketing, engineering, design, um, the only thing you don't see right now is uh, our positions on the operations side. But if you were on the operations side, if you are human resources, um, you know, whether it's recruiting, human resources, operations, IT, um, definitely reach out to us because we're there's there's a lot of work to do um, in the next year and beyond. Yes, you got the um, and if you have the right email and I'll post it again here, Kathy at gravitational.com. I'm looking forward. I expect to hear from you, so that's really important. I definitely expect to hear from you um, after today, today and beyond. Please feel free to ask questions. I want to see your your names on um, applying to some positions. So really excited about this opportunity to um, to share and for you all to get to know a really great company. And I think what's also really interesting is that, you know, as, as a startup um, and as a company that's really scaling very quickly, it's really important. It's great to, um, to have diversity in the kind of levels, whether folks on the junior side or advanced side, um, being able to uh, get folks from all those different levels. Yeah, so what, especially being here for the last almost a year now, which is so surprising that it's been a year, uh, almost a year, but some of the things that I enjoy about being gravitational, be, it's that it's very much um, a company of grownups, um, just being respectful, being very kind and um, generous in mind and thought. Um, I'm not, a, this is coming to a startup world is very much, uh, was very much new to me. Um, but I'm so thankful for just the excitement of energy, um, you know, and the the kindness and thoughtfulness of, of folks really being, you know, sitting down, um, being able to learn from others, being able to to share and ask questions and, and not feel like an idiot, um, and really a culture of learning and developing and um, and excitement. And I also appreciate the, the balance part as someone who, you know, wellness is important to me and being able to, to do work in a place where recognizing that, um, you know, we come to work and we bring our whole selves. Like we shouldn't just like leave our, leave our, our self at the door when we come to work. You know, how can we be as authentic as possible um, and feel listened to and feel supported to do the best in our job when it comes to like, you know, clarity of expectations, um, you know, people that, that care about us, about us and are honest with us and want us to do our best work. Um, so that's been really exciting and really appreciated. I really like the people that I work with. So I'm very thankful for that. And I like the academic side of it, my background in research and um, so really not just being reckless in how we make decisions, but being very thoughtful about that. Um, I do appreciate that a lot. Other questions and thoughts? And thank you everyone um, for participating, for joining here today. Um, I expect to see a lot more folks from, from North Carolina, from Austin, um, from, you know, wherever you are working um, here at Gravitational. And I, and also I'll speak for, you know, not just myself, but I know that, again, like that, the full, um, the open, open core environment and open core culture. I think what's exciting about that too for engineers is that um, as you grow and develop and whether gravitational is your, um, the last place you ever work that you, you can really share 
what it is that you've done as an employee. And I think that um, that is on the open core side, but even for me and human resources, being encouraged um, to write blogs and to share expertise publicly, that's really exciting so that being able to um, have a content that I've created um, in while working here at Gravitational, having that um, be open to the public, um, I really think it creates a sense of, of leadership. And um, it's been exciting to see over the past year, even folks as they transition from um, one part of the company to another part of the company because they have grown in their skills and talents and um, folks that, you know, I could think of one person who started off in sales and then just as they develop their, their writing and sharing in terms of blogs and webinars and moved over into the marketing side. And that's just really exciting to see because that it shows um, growth and encouragement and both um, managers and leaders being able to see potential um, and growth and really uh, encouraging that and nurturing that. Other thoughts and questions? All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone joining here today. And again, look forward to hearing from you. Um, please check out our blog online at gravitational.com. Um, check out our website and our career pages. Please reach out. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, Kathy? Yeah. There is another question in the chat from Jonathan. Okay. Oh, about the... Um, Oh, most important value you look for in hiring candidates? That's a great question. I mean, in addition to obviously skills, um, that those cultural values are, are really important as well. Um, like, do you fit into that, those cultural values like I named? Let me go back there to, um, so we, this is why we try to be really important. Like, you know, can someone be, um, you know, value, do you value transparency and thoughtfulness and honesty and humility and balance as much as we do, because um, that's going to be really important because those are values that are significant to the company. Um, and I think one of the things, again, that I enjoy about Gravitational is that as a startup, and it's really important to our founders to bring on human resources earlier rather than later. And part of that was that many times um, startups bring in human resources when they've gotten into trouble or when there's a problem. Uh, but Gravitational is a company, is a company where it's like, we love who we are and we really value who we are. And we want to maintain that, um, especially through scale and through rapid growth. Um, and so how do we, you know, how do we make sure that we continue to do that and to, um, you know, develop in that, to develop and grow quickly, but also um, thoughtfully um, and with folks that share the same values that we do. I know we don't, right now, we don't have um, openings in India. We have, we are growing um, in Europe, um, but don't have any openings in India currently. But please um, continue to check back with us and, um, and reach out just in case there, you know, as again, we're growing very quickly. And so as opportunities arise, please touch base with us and keep in touch with us. Please, I'm here, so continue to ask questions. This is your opportunity and not your only opportunity either.
And for our hiring on the engineering side, we have, um, you know, engineers do a coding challenge. And again, you know, it's not, it's, it's meant to be very um, developmental um, to get a sense of where you are um, in addition to the interview process, but from um, to be very direct and transparent in terms of what we're looking for, um, what level we think you are as an engineer, um, and all of that laid out very clearly. So again, what our engineering candidates um, speak highly about is that process that is um, transparent and thoughtful um, and really carefully developed um, and, and with as little bias as possible um, to make sure that we have, um, you know, information about how can you be as successful as possible where, where you are and um, both where your growth areas are and where your strengths are. Yeah, absolutely. And Jeff, I think what's great is that being, um, because you're really clear about that, uh, I think the one, both from a technical perspective, as well as from a growth perspective, knowing that, um, you know, being clear, what are the skills that you bring to the table and where your skills may be best um, suited for the company now, um, as well as thinking very future oriented and being, um, and communicating that with managers and leadership around where you like to go um, and developing a plan for that. So that's a great question. Um, and it's always helpful kind of going in and thinking about and coming in with a very growth oriented lens. And there's so many opportunities with a startup for that. And again, things like the coding challenge being having that um, give a sense of where folks are technically when they apply for a position um, and then being really clear about you know, the different positions and what you might need um, from a systems administrator piece or um, our QA engineer piece, what, what, the, what the gaps um, between developing into um, a development engineer, what that looks like and what it, would, what it means to um, close those gaps and be prepared. Make sure I'm answering all of your questions. I love it. I really appreciate the questions. And for you all, I'm interested. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, and I also want to hear kind of what are you looking for in a company? What are you looking for? Um, you know, if you're actively looking or not actively looking, um, what are some of the things that you're looking in terms of the candidate process, as well as in a, a company um, values that interests you? Yeah, so in terms of um, measuring success in the company as a developer, one, we want to see um, growth and development. So we have a range of levels from one to six. And wherever you are on that continuum, making it very clear. So for example, what does it mean to be a level three engineer? Um, what would it take to become a level four engineer? Like being very clear on um, the kinds of skill and development that needs. So it's very transparent in terms of what you what it is that you need and how you can grow and develop. And I think that that kind of transparency is really important. So that being really clear about what it is that um, is success, what does success look like on your particular team and in your particular position, um, but how you contribute to the company's overall success as well. And part of that too is us really getting clear from as an operations plan around 
what does our what is our company where we are currently where we're going and what we need to get there and how everyone's role fits into that so that's something that we've continued to to clarify um, so that folks know um, and know where their work fits in we also use objectives and key results also OKRs, um, if you're familiar with that, uh, as a way to help us measure our success as, as teams. Great question, Pro. Um, Pro asked, like, what strengths do you think are most important in a developer? Um, in addition to the, you know, technical skills, um, being very growth oriented, um, having, you know, having our company values in mind. Um, and I say being growth oriented and having a, um, a growth mindset, uh, being very clear where and clear and self aware about where your talents are now and what it would take to grow. Um, so those are really important in, in looking at candidates and, um, and as well as assessing our developers. Can you, can you and are you willing to learn um, and learn quickly and ask questions? Um, you know, sometimes, that, especially when, when our team members come on as new, uh, new team members, I find that like you'll ask questions like, okay, or do you have any questions? And folks are like, no, 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 I don't have questions. Like, don't be shy about asking questions. If you're not asking questions, then then I'm worried. Um, but if you are asking a lot of questions and willing to to reach out and and really, and that's what we encourage for our managers too, is that don't take um, no questions as an as an answer, right? Like, really, it's not about. Um, do you have questions as a team member, but what are some questions that you do have and to really um, encourage that environment of asking questions of growing um, and continuing to be self aware about where you are and where potential gaps are and about closing those gaps and learning and developing and growing um, based on what it is that we, we need to get the job done. We have a couple more minutes. Really great questions. Thank you, everyone. We have one minute left, Kathy. Okay, we have one minute left. Again, thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. Great, great questions. Thank you. Um, if other questions, when other questions come up after this, please reach out. Thank you, ATO. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your conference and the rest of our conference.